guys, this is uh, Amanda, aka Fox Raven Farm, aka Victim Studio. And uh, last time I did a um, a live view. I set up a link and sent a video out to show people how I kind of do my process. And I got a lot of requests for a tutorial. So uh, today, today I'm gonna do that, and I hope that you guys find it helpful. I'm going to go through, kind of talk out what I do as I'm doing it. Um, this is a good example because the horse has a halter on and we're also going to add markings to this horse. Um, and I'll just kind of show you what I do um, and how to achieve that style. And I hope you guys will find it helpful. Okay, so the first thing I do is I go to DeviantArt and I find stock. I usually start with a background stock first because I find something I like that fits the horse, um, that fits what the owner has requested the background to be. And then once I find one I like, then I go through and I find a horse that will suit that background. So when I'm picking a horse, this is an important step if you want your art to look uh, realistic, look really realistic, you're going to want to pick a horse that matches the lighting of the background or vice versa. So you're going to, if you have a horse, for instance, in a dark background like this, you're going to want, a, or sorry, that's not a good example, but like a cloudy background like, um, like this, you're going to want a horse that doesn't have any sun on him, like this, like this horse would work well in this kind of setting. So you're going to want it to match as close as possible. It's a subtle thing, but it really makes a difference. So that's what I've done, and I've already kind of skipped ahead and cut out basically cut out the horse um, and then I kind of put him on a composition and I position the horse cut out somewhere on the canvas so this is about right sometimes I move him around but for now that's fine all right so <coughs> cutting out the horse everybody has different techniques different styles um, I've been doing this a long time I've been doing digital art I've been working with Photoshop and Illustrator and all the Adobe products for a really long time um, and this is the way I prefer to do this kind of art. So I don't use the lasso tool to cut the horse out or the select tool, the quick selection tool. What I do is I go through and I don't even use my tablet for this usually because I like to use this shift key to get long areas, uh, long straight areas. So I start with a Sometimes I use a solid brush, sometimes I use this brush, but I'm going to go with the solid brush this time. And I always do three. I s do three to start with, a size three brush, and I zoom in pretty, not that close, but, you know, close enough so you can see what you're doing. And I usually start right up here on the face, and I literally just trace around the horse. Now, you may be seeing that I'm getting these really straight lines. How I'm doing that, uh, we're going to remove that real quick, it's going to go away, but you click in one area and then you hold shift and you drag it down to the end point of that line and you click and then it has a nice straight line so you don't have to go like this and hope you get a straight line. It's really helpful um, to cut your horse out. This is a really personal way of doing this. Um, it is a little time consuming, but once you get it down, you can go pretty fast. So we're just going to cut through that. Um, if you wanted to keep the tack, you wouldn't do that, obviously, but we're going to remove the halter. I'm going to show you how I do that. cut out the horse at this point. Um, oh yeah, always remember to go in and do these. <laughs> Sometimes you forget, forget about them. And then you're just like, oh no. Okay, so I'm satisfied with this for now. So now that I've gone through and cut the horse out closely, 
to uh, use a bigger brush and erase the rest of the background. Pretty much the same way. Doing long, long straight areas with the ship flick tip. You gotta be careful when you do this though because you don't want to end up cutting out too much off of that um, edge you've created. So you just kind of want to erase the rest without taking out what you've already separated from your lines. cut out at this point and he's already kind of looking like he belongs in the background so the next thing I do usually is I take the horse <coughs> select the horse layer and I go to noise reduce noise and these are my settings for reduce noise this is the effect you use to get that soft um, kind of airbrush effect on the horse and kind of gets rid of all of the dirt or noise um, created by the camera. So we hit OK. So that already looks a lot better. So that's my preliminary step. Oh, one more thing. And then you take, and then I select the background layer. And I select a pretty big brush. This is the quick selection tool. And it doesn't you just kind of select right above the horizon line of your background. So I hit my fine edge, feather, add a lot of feather, OK, filter, blur, lens blur. You can use any of these blurs, but lens blur gives it the most camera-y effect. Here's my settings that I usually use for the lens blur on the background. Uh, you can adjust them however you want. If you want a more extreme blur or less extreme blur, you can bump this up and mess with these settings to get the effect you want. So that's that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this actually. Also, when you're working with images you're going to always want to save a working file of the image so you can go back and change things especially if you're selling your art and the person who you made the image for doesn't like something you can go back and easily change it instead of having to redo it completely or tell them that you can't change it um, so always keep a working depending on the program you're going to use the file format's going to be different but you're always going to want to keep some kind of working file as well as a png or jpeg without you choose to save your images. Alright, so the next thing I do after I kind of get everything working together is I go to, um, sometimes I play around with the auto tones and colors just like I don't like that at all, just to see what they do. No, okay, I was making myself. So, the first thing you do is you're going to want to make your horse look like he actually is in the light and in the atmosphere that the background you've chosen has. So to do that, <coughs> there's different ways uh, of what, this is how I do it. I go to color balance first, and I look at the background image, and I look to see what colors are in the background. So this image has, the background here has a lot of oranges and yellows, a little bit of blue, but not, it's mostly yellow, so I'm going to add yellow to the horse, maybe a bit of red, I can select the highlight. Typically, when you're doing the highlights and shadows, you're going to want the highlights to be more yellow and the shadows to be more blue. Uh, the blue will give you a more extreme shadow, but it also has a blue tint to it, so that's not what you're seeing in the 
kind of the same um, shadows that are being created by the background. The light in the background. So I'm going to kind of up the tone here. And this horse dog might actually. darken the background a little bit too. I feel like it's a bit too shady, but I'm gonna but I am gonna darken the background a little. Alright, let me find my black here. Um so let's get rid of all these extra little remnants of the background. I'll kind of do blur. Once you blur the background, you can see these a lot easier. And if you were to remove them, you don't have your, you don't have any stray bits of background. basics are done. I'm going to go in and remove the halter. Now this can be tricky. Um, I'll try my best to explain my process with this, but it really is kind of touchy and touch and go sort of thing. So hopefully just by seeing it, you'll kind of get the idea. Okay, so you're going to use this tool, which is the clone stamp tool. And you're going to play around with the different sizes of the brushes, but basically you're going to look at the lines of the, on the horse's face, the contours, and you're going to try to match that with the area that you're replacing. So, for instance, here on his nose, you're going to want this darkness, this shadow, to be kind of down naturally, so you're going to kind of take Same goes for the big areas. I'm gonna try to use a smaller brush just so it doesn't look completely repetitive. Like if you're doing a little just copy um, a couple inches over, you're gonna want to try to blend it as much as possible. Use um, a feathery brush like this. Um, this part though is kind of tricky. Again, you're just kind of touch and go. Your artist's eye will take over. shadows are pretty much what you do. Uh, just do your best. Um, this is the part that always kind of looks obvious. You know, there's a lot of extreme shadows on the horse's face. It makes it harder to get that natural look, but it can be achieved. You just have to be careful. I'm going to steal, so the color here is similar. I can't take this part here, so I'm going to look for a similar texture and color on the horse's face in a different area and apply it there as well. So, again, so it isn't so like repetitive. Patterns can get pretty repetitive pretty fast. Can get pretty obvious.
this stuff, but if you really want to see me see all these kind of weird markings that just don't really look that great, um, you can smooth that out using this tool. So I picked this decent sized brush. Uh, use a feathered brush for this too. I usually put the strength between two and three, depending on what I'm trying to remove or blend. So here, in this case, I'm going to drag it up and down, following the contours a little bit. You're going to want to pull it in the direction that the hair is going. And you can drag it over markings too. For spots that you're trying to get rid of, you can just kind of push and pull it in different directions to erase it. Like so. But you don't want to do this use this overuse this tool because it can pretty much erase everything on your horse if you're not careful. You can lose all those nice shadows and um, your horse will look blurry. Unless that's what you want. On the legs, I, I do side to side instead of up and down. You want to keep those delicate shadows in place. And if you don't, they get pulled around and you quickly lose the definition. So very touchy. I'm going to eyeball it. forget the shadow because that's what adding a shadow is going to make your horse look rounded uh, it's also going to heighten that sense of realism that you're going for so create a separate layer my technique is I go through and I find the darkest shadow um, that exists already in the background so I pull <laughs> say this is one of the darkest shadows pull from here, take the brush, and this is my feathered brush. Alright, now keep your original reference photo up, because some people are really nitpicky and they'll go through and they'll match the shot, the, the, uh, the light source. The one we have right now is pretty uh, close, so just for the sake of this tutorial. would just be this simpler and be done with it, but if you really, really want to show off, you want to do this. So, put the thing side by side. You can use a tablet for this if you have one. I'm not going to use mine, because like I said, I wanted to show that this can be done without using a tablet, but it's a lot easier on a tablet if you have one. Definitely use a brush. So you look at the shadow here. if you don't feel comfortable drawing it exactly. Um, but after a while you should be able to draw it roughly. You know, it's pretty rough. Don't worry about the opacity or anything yet, just get that shape in. And I am drawing with the trackpad on my laptop for the record, so you have no excuse. <laughs> Thank 
can be done. And it can be done well. If you don't have a trackpad, a mouse will work just as well, but I highly recommend using a trackpad if you don't have a tablet, because you can pretty much just draw on the trackpad. trick to make your horse look grounded <coughs> along with the shadow is to put the shadow underneath the hooves. This I figured out a while ago and it's really made a difference, especially on these hard surfaces where the hooves aren't covered in grass. I can kind of blur out my skins just a little bit. Yeah, that might work. And they're not really that They're already kind of covered up by the leaves anyway. It's really bugging me. I don't know why I don't like it. This will happen to you sometimes. <laughs> It'll drive you absolutely crazy.
So a lot of people have different techniques for this. Um, it really depends on what you think works best for you. Some people prefer to totally erase the tail and the mane and completely redraw them. Um, I don't recommend that for people who are just starting out. I don't do that. Uh, there's a lot of great artists out there who are very talented and can manage that. Um, for me though, I think there's an easier way to do it uh, that's less it's easier to learn and master, um, and it's really effective. And you can do it all using the Splinter tool. So like we did on the horse, we're going to push and pull the hair, but for this we're going to up the strength a lot, so up to 80, because you're really going to want to drag the hair out. You're going to want to select a soft or feathered brush, uh, each two or three, two or three size brush. where there's strands, kind of sticking out, and just going to follow those through and pull them out. So when you're cutting out the mane and tail, if you're going to use this technique, you're going to want to cut out most of it, where the end, see how you've got all these hairs flying out? You're going to want to get rid of those because you're just going to replace them, but you're going to want to keep the original contours of where it starts. So you can kind of just follow through the, the natural wave, and you don't have to worry about cutting out around all these little strands that are just sitting right there. You don't want to do that. Yeah, you can give them as much hair or as little as you want. And you can go really far with this technique. I mean, if you up, you can make his mane so much longer if you up the strength. See how much that pulls out? Um, usually the horses already have decent enough manes, I don't really see that, unless they have like no mane. But usually in stock, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the hair too so that I erase that out. Definitely erase the big areas out <laughs> in between the hair strands, because otherwise it's going to look really out of place and it's going to bug the heck out of you. And you can just go back over it. Just make sure to blend it in. Oop. Perfect. Mm, it's a little green, but that's okay. Alright. So the tail, up the strength a little bit more. Between 90% and 95% is usually what I use. Um, I usually go to 3, size 3 brush on the tail too, because the strands are longer, or they're thicker too, I feel like I can get away with it. And like I said, you're going to do the same thing, you're going to give it the mane, you're just going to follow these lines out, just kind of follow their natural flow. You can look back at your reference image if you need to, but most of the time you want to just kind of eyeball it. I switch between 3 and 2, depending on how I want that particular strand to look. Try to avoid straight lines like that too. See how killer that is? I mean, it just kind of looks way out of place. So you go back and redo that. Just the, the natural flow of things. If you don't feel like going in and erasing that, there's another way to do it. Um, it's kind of, it's a little bit more tedious, but if you really just don't feel like going, going in there and cutting these out, you can just change, or you could burn them out, is one way to do it. Just pretend like they're not there. Just burn them out like this, make them blend in better. Or you can select this area and change the color to like match the background, like this gray or a yellow or something. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm not sure how to do that. Just I need to make the lasso look nice too. Come on, man. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just need to get everything in there. Just go ahead and make the adjustments. 
sleep, but there's a gray background with that. It kind of affects the hair around it, but we can blend it in with the central. Like that. Oh, look at that. Okay, and then just do this until you feel like it looks flowy and natural enough. It doesn't take too long. This is also a lot easier with the tablet. Uh, again, I'm just drawing with my finger on my trackpad. Um, this will go a lot faster for you <laughs> if you have a tablet, but if you don't have one, that's okay. Oh, Try to get little tufts in here too, that kind of adds to the natural look. Right. Another thing to do, um, if you see this kind of, you can kind of see where the original cut was, um, where you've pulled out, where I've pulled out the dark color of the tail. A way to make get rid of that kind of awkward line is to just pull back and you smudge out. So you can pull this out and then pull it back in. And it'll kind of get rid of that awkward um, solid line that you've created by cutting out. This will only work, okay, I, I should probably clarify this. This will only look good if you use uh, a blurred background, if you blur out your background first. Because if you don't and you have a pretty sharp background, everywhere around the tail and the mane is going to be blurred out and it's going to look pretty funny. So I highly recommend you blur out your background somehow. It's not hard to do and it'll give your image a really cinematic look. has their own style and they figure out their own way of doing things. Alright, that looks pretty good. One thing isn't looking right over here. I don't know if you guys see that or not. Right in here is bugging me. Let's see if it's still kind of bugging me. Okay. What a difference, right? Almost ready to add text. One thing I recommend doing to your images to kind of, especially if you have a center central composition, is to take a vignette of some sort. You can either do a soft vignette or a bold vignette. Um, I have an action, a Photoshop action, that allows me to apply a vignette really quickly, like so. But if you don't have that, you can get one. It's not hard. You can go download them somewhere. but. Um, there's an easy way to do it too, by hand. You just create a really big brush like this in a dark color. And then you just go around and you make like this. Make sure you do this on a separate layer too. Pause all the opacity here. And multiply it, play with the effects. Whatever you want. So that kind of just inks the horse more, you know, you can, he stands out a bit more. It sets the background back as well, just keeps the background received. I like this one better. Uh, maybe both. I don't know. I'll keep them both in. Make sure you save your image as you're working. Another trick to make your horse really pop um, is that I employ is I go to layer, layer style, or blend in options. These you're going to play with a lot. Uh, this is how, I won't, I'll get to that later. Okay, so what I do is I choose either inner glow or inner 
shadow depending on the background if it's dark or light. You, it kind of gives the halo-y effect on the, on the horse. Um, if you keep your hand out, it's like a light feather. Just kind of creates a halo that looks nice. Um, you can also add an outer, a really subtle outer glow. Obviously, you don't want it like this. I mean, if you want, you do. But if you want it to look more natural, play with the settings, find what you think works. Play with the colors if you do. So that looks pretty good, right? Don't do a drop shadow. Now he really does look like he's in that environment. <clears throat> I think we're just about at 299. Alright, if there's something that's really bugging you, um, they say that good design goes unnoticed and bad design sticks out. And you will see it. And it will bug you. So for me right now, what's bugging me is the slopes down here. They just look flat and they look like they're not really part of the environment. The horse himself does, but his feet just don't look properly grounded, and I'm trying to figure out why. I think I know why, so I'm going to go to um, this tool, the burn tool, and this will let you apply shadows really quickly. And we're going to use a, we want to add a shadow or a highlight, so I'm going to sele select a feather brush. Sometimes you just gotta throw your hands up and say, whatever, works for me. Okay. Save. So, I'm actually doing this image for one of my own horses, so I don't have any client specifications to work for, or work to, so I can kind of blow off something like that. Um, but if you have a client, definitely try to, or you have someone who's commissioned you, definitely try to work out mistakes like that keeps them in good habits. Okay. So this is the horse that I'm doing the image for. I guess, okay, I'll go ahead and add in some of the markings too. I'm gonna leave in the star because I don't feel like getting rid of it, but I can show you how to add in, how I add in markings as well. So you can make sure your image is saved. If you want, you can create a duplicate layer with your base horse on it turn it off and you can't see it, just to have it, um, in case you screw up on this one. But, we won't screw it up. Okay, so again, this is a lot easier with a tablet. If you're doing a horse that has really intricate, uh, intricate pinto patterning on it, you're definitely going to want to invest in a tablet or at least um, a trackpad, because drawing with just your finger can get hard. Okay, so she's got a bit of a snip, so... Okay, so you're gonna take the lasso tool, make sure this square is selected, and you're gonna trace, you're gonna draw over where the light markings are. And it's okay if you go out, because it's on a separate layer. So there's your snip, more or less. Definitely 
don't go over the equipment. The horse will end up with light enough to just sprint to it. Then we can do the quick retreat. Oops, alright. I screwed up. Dang it. Select this <laughs> once you select your next uh, white area so you don't lose everything else that you've drawn before. to get those markings in. It might take you a couple tries. But again, this is a lot easier and a lot quicker with a areas are selected. <coughs> I'm going to go up to image, adjustment, brightness, contrast. Turn that brightness all the way up. And turn that contrast all the way down. Hit OK. Still pretty uh, wonky looking, so I'm going to go to can bump that white up, the lightness, excuse me, but I'm going to bump that up, make it look more white, but not too much because you don't want it to look too fake. Most horses' socks aren't really that white anyway. Keep these selected, and again, you're going to go through to your handy dandy color balance, and you're going to play around with that too, just to make it, make the shadows look match the rest of the horse. Step, oh yeah, if you're doing pictures, you can also do this. So, one thing you can do to kind of smooth out the rough edges, you can leave them like that if you want. I prefer not to. So again, we're going to go back to handy dandy smudge. Use a very small percentage. Kind of go over the marking that you just did. So I'm going to highlight where you've missed <laughs> spots, put some background on your horse, make sure his background is what he would like. You don't want to get rid of all those harsh edges, but that um, effect. Especially for 
to go over with this much blue again and kind of soften those harsher shadows. Definitely go over the hoof line again. I'm going to want to soften that out quite a bit. Alright, cool. And the last part <coughs> is to put the pink on the... Oh, I forgot to do this one. the pink on the nose, pretty easy, on the other layer. Go up here to uh, load select, load selection, select of course first, select, load selection, select, load selection, and OK. So that's going to select the layer, everything that's on that layer. Now on that new layer you just created, take a brush, really big. Just dip it over that area. You're going to go down here to your color and go over here. Find a color in the pink blue spectrum that you want to use as your shade specific. You're going to go over it. Just make sure you select the horse first on the <coughs> on this layer. Draw on the separate layer. Add the pink onto the separate layer. And then you're going to go down to your oh, your horse is first. Screen, dog, brush. Depends. In Selecting a font to use for the horse's portrait, you're really going to want to take into consideration what the image is and what the feel, obviously what the feel of the image you've just created is, because um, text can really kind of make or break an image, in my opinion. You can have a beautifully done manip manipulation or drawing, but then if you have, say, plain black text, like so. this big and here or here. It just it, it just kind of throws everything off. So I'm going to show you some tips to help make your typography choices enhance your manips instead of just kind of wasting them. isn't a bad choice here. Try to avoid using black though. So you select a color that's already on the palette and maybe like a dark brown. Black just is black. Boring. Alright, so I like that a lot better. And now to get rid of this flatness on this text boring flatness, you're going to go up to layer, layer style, blending options, and there's tons of options for blending. Um, there's lots of, you can actually download text effects off the internet as well, so if you don't feel like going through these and building them yourself. Um, so you can just play with these settings and find something that you like. Sometimes you want Usually I find that a subtle bevel is best. You don't want to like 
go crazy with this because then it'll look kind of cheap and weird and out of place. You could add a color overlay. I mean, just kind of go down the list and play with it and see what looks good. Okay, we've got tons of different gradients. That was my tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you want, I can make more. Just leave a comment down in the thread and um, post topics that you'd like to see. I thought this was a pretty one and done sort of um, tutorial, but if there's anything specific you'd like to see, um, leave let me know. Thanks, guys. <laughs>